What's going on guys, Coach here at the Lions Den located in Colmar, PA. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about doing strongman while still in a calorie deficit or in a cutting phase. Should you do it? Is it worth it? Should I take out strongman, etc.? This question comes from my Instagram. So if you guys are following me on Instagram, I like to do a lot of Q and A's. Now the issue with the Q and A is I have to answer the question in a short amount of time. And with doing a YouTube video, we can go way more in depth on these questions and hopefully give you a deeper dive and a better answer. First off, if you're not following me on Instagram, you definitely should, it gives you a really good glimpse of my training, my lifestyle, etc. It's the same name as is for the YouTube channel. Just type in Zat Strength on Instagram. Make sure you follow me. And when I do these Q and A's, throw up your questions because I'll answer them and then they may end up a more in depth video. The question I had was from somebody basically saying, you know, should I still do straw men when I'm in a cutting phase? And my first thought process was, why wouldn't you continue doing straw man when you're in a cutting phase? I don't know if people think you should only do strongman when you're either in maintenance or you're massing or you're just working on strength training, et cetera. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that you absolutely can still do strongman or incorporate strongman in your training uh, when you're cutting. So if you're watching this video for the first time, you may think, well, does this guy know anything about strongman? You know, is he even qualified to talk about it? And I'm gonna give you guys some brief background on myself. So in 2017, I got involved with the sport of strongman uh, and I've competed pretty much from 2017 until now. I'm taking a little bit of a break right now just to focus on some other goals that I have, but I'm still going to compete and train strongman in the future and probably for the rest of my life because it's something I do really enjoy. So I can relate to this question. Uh, but when I was competing, I've competed in a lot of local shows. Uh, I've also won PA Strongest Man multiple times. I've been to nationals multiple times, and I've also traveled overseas and competed at an international level for Team USA at the 105 class. Uh, my biggest achievement I would say thus far has been winning nationals in 2019, and not only taking my weight class and the 242 class, but I also won the whole heavyweight class beating the guys who are 275 as well. So I think I have a little bit of credentials when it comes to talking about this and I've trained with a lot of the best and even pro strongman like World Strongest Man Martins Lisi's. Uh, so I've been able to pick their brains on this topic. So the first thing that I wanna say when it comes to training strongman in a calorie deficit or in a cutting phase is I'm not actually concerned with training strongman in general. Uh, really what I'm concerned with is the training principles when it comes to volume and my nutrition uh, around my training. So when it comes to volume, it shows through the research that higher volume training is going to be your best bet when you're in a calorie deficit to preserve and potentially even build muscle. So if I were you and I'm looking at my programming, I would just increase that volume uh, when I'm in that cut. So maybe if you're doing you know, uh, lower rep ranges, I would increase that volume to be you know, six to 12 reps per se. And you can still do your strongman movements in higher volume as long as you're uh, regulating your fatigue properly. Uh, the other thing you could do is just do a strongman lift as your main lift for the day and then do higher volume accessory movements. And you can even include strongman implements in your accessory work. So maybe if you're doing a shoulder push press, you could do a Viking press instead, or you can do a log push press. You know, there's ways to integrate strongman implements into your program with higher volume work. That's completely fine. The other thing you can do is for your conditioning, maybe you're gonna do sandbag work or sled work or a medley of some sort to, to still get that taste and element of strongman um, while still being in your deficit. Like that's totally manageable. Uh, the other thing that's been shown is that we wanna make sure we have a higher protein intake when we're in that deficit to build and preserve as much muscle as possible. So when I'm cutting, I typically am always sticking around that one gram of protein per body weight. So if I'm 250 pounds, I'm getting in 250 grams of protein. Now, you don't have to do this, but I do it personally, is I actually increase that to about 1.25 grams of protein uh, per pound of body weight. So say I'm 250, you know, I'm probably gonna be in that 275 you know, maybe 300 grams of protein when I'm cutting, uh, just to make sure that I'm getting as much protein in my body as possible so that I'm not losing muscle mass. So hopefully that answers your question. If you're, you have more in-depth questions, put them down in the comments section. But just to kind of recap, 
I think it's absolutely possible that you can still train strongman or use implements in your program uh, when you're in that deficit. Now, the one thing I do wanna talk about is training motivation and being compliant. If I'm a coach or you're a coach watching this video and you have an athlete who says, I really love strongman training uh, and I wanna keep that in my program, it would be in your best interest to keep that in your client's program because it motivates them to wanna to go to the gym and train. They're gonna be more compliant to the program that you write for them. Where on the flip side, if you said, I really don't like X, Y, and Z, but then you put that in their program, they're probably gonna not be as motivated and compliant to train because it's not stuff that they're interested in. Not to say that you don't wanna work on your weak points and there's certain times where you gotta do things that you don't necessarily love, but for the general population, I just wanna keep them as motivated and compliant to the program and in the gym as much as possible when they're training. So if you're my client and you like strongman training, no matter if we're massing, if we're maintaining, or if we're cutting, I'm gonna still sprinkle that stuff in. It may not be as loaded with strongman uh, if we're far out from competitions, but you better bet that, hey, you know, if you like doing log clean and press, I'm gonna put a day in there where you can work on log clean and press maybe as your first movement, and then we hit some higher volume stuff for our accessories. Or I may switch those accessories to more strongman variations. Like I said, maybe it's a bench press, but we're gonna do axle bar bench press because you use axle bars and strongman. Or maybe you're deadlifting. Well, maybe we do an axle bar deadlift, or maybe we do a frame deadlift or something of that nature. So you're still getting that strongman feel in your program, uh, whether you're in that deficit or not, and that's gonna keep you compliant. As long as we're auto-regulating our training with a proper program, I don't think that there's any issue whatsoever that you have strongman involved with your training when you are in a deficit. That's all I have on that topic. If you guys liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And until then, stay a lean, mean, tracking machine. I'll catch up with you guys next time. Peace.